Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we're going to do the thing I've always said I probably might want to do, but I never really got around to it. So I'm going to do this once and probably most likely not again, but we'll see. Let's see what you got. Fire striking door, that's good. Good fire strike. Uh, nice backing up. Why'd you stand there? What? What? No, 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 no. Full stop, full stop, full stop. Why? Would you ever just stop moving? <laughs> Especially in the face of a fire strike. Why did you just not care in the slightest about this fire strike and just stand there and take it? Regardless, that's not even the best spot to be holding. Okay, see, so, see, now you start moving because you, you got hit by it, but like. <sighs> okay, you fire strike again, which is kind of made up for it, but honestly, you, you can't just get hit by them. It's really important that you don't. Actually, like legitimately, it's really going to be important that you don't. Drop your shield, keep it down, let it recharge more. Alright, that's enough. Yep. You can start poking. You could have charged him then, but that's okay. Now you're going to get charged because you knew what to do and you didn't. Depend on the sig, though. Okay, okay. I'm going to work this down for you, right? Charging is almost always a good idea, so long as the person is either A, um, well, so long as two of these these two conditions are met, it is almost always a good idea. The person is alone, as the Reinhardt is, and the person is, the when you charge, the amount of time that it will take you to hit a wall is very, very small. Usually within a second or about a second. If you can commit, meet both of those, those criteria, then it's pretty uh, usually a pretty good chance to charge. In this scenario, you definitely could have charged him, and there's almost no chance he would have escaped because he is very close. Therefore, you didn't charge here, and you got charged by him because he realized he could charge you. And you took 300 damage for it and gave him a ton of bolt. Notice how his ult's now at 45. It's okay, though. You capitalize and hurt the sig. Keep the shield up. No. No, no, uh, 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 no, 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 don't think that just because he made a good play doesn't mean we have to poke, poke at you. Look at this here. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about this. Notice how right after you charge him, keep your shield up on constantly. But the reason you fight because you fire strike, one of your team members died. See, now your drunk heart's dead, right? Why did you turn around? Why couldn't you just keep the shield up in front of this Hanzo? Is what I'm saying, right? Because if you have nearly full shield, which you did, if you keep your shield up and n not deciding deciding to just drop your shield randomly when there are people behind you is very, very annoying. And I mean, not very annoying, is very, very bad. Because even though it might not be super important in lower ELO games like this one, you can't really rely on that because eventually, or People are going to hit the people as soon as you drop your shield. People are going. The people behind you are still are starting to get hit. If you get hit, you're a tank. That's mo mostly okay, depending if they have a roadhog or not. But if your teammates get hit, they can die in like literally one hit most of the time. So you need to keep your shield up constantly in order to be safe. Even though you might be considering a C9, you're not even going to be the first one to get to point. It's going to be this brig. And if it's just one person, who could it possibly be? Think about that. The only person it could really be is Lucio, because four of them have already died. And you already saw the Hanzo, so it only could be a Lucio. So the Brig can obviously deal with the Lucio, and if Brig can't deal with the Lucio alone, the Ana could. But the fact that we lost his Drunk Rat is really crucial, and you're most likely going to have to deal with a much harder hold, a much harder uh, defense now that you've lost his Drunk Rat. So the fact that you ran backwards and got distracted by the Lucio on point is very bad. A main tank shouldn't be really the really one peeling for that. They can be, but you need to back up with your shield up. Especially when they have a Hanzo. If they don't, and you understand that they, they don't have anything that can have this much po this range damage, then it might be safe to do that. 
But in this case, particularly, it's very important that you did. And now, because you put down your shield, you have now given them a junk rat, and you are now down one. The junk rat might get back in time. But they're going to have a full push, and junk rat's going to be a bit late. So because of this, you might have just lost this point here. Let's see. I see the junk cuts back now. But imagine if we were here already, you know? Uh, anyways. Let's see here. Okay, okay, wait, 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 wait. I gotta ask you, right? Why'd you fire strike? Because, okay. Fire strike will almost 100% of the time not kill if it's not going for a play where it's on a low health target. And if you're firing into the enemy team, it's not going to be a low health target because they're all going to be full health and it's going to get healed immediately. So if you have full ult and you damage people, you damage people with fire strike, it is likely that you're going to just feed the enemy healer's ult. And considering how close this Lucio is, if this Lucio gets beat, you've lost the, you've lost this push most likely. Connor's is close to blade, the beat can counteract not only the tire, but also the nano blade, possibly. So you gotta keep this in mind. <laughs> if you already have shatter, why would you fire strike ever unless the, you're going for a particular target? If you want to focus one target, that's fine, right? But you fire strike in the hopes of getting more ult charge when you already had ult. So, no, that's not what you should be doing. And also, shattering while you have fire strike is really, really important. And if they push up and you see a good shatter opportunity and you don't have fire strike, then that turns into a bad play. Or a worse play, rather. Even though you got a good shatter off, you it might not be matter because if you don't fire strike them and com damage combo them, then uh, you get no luck here. So, while, once you have shatter, there's really no need to fire strike ever. You're at 98 right now. You have it, and you decide to fire strike. And even what got deflected by a Genji. See, like a lot of this kind of stuff can happen. All right. Terrible pin. Nope. Nope. Not a terrible shatter though. But know that that pin could have lost you the game. So okay. I mean, sorry. I didn't mean to be so rude. So. Remember when I said it's almost always a good chance to charge when it's either A, that person is alone, or B, the amount of time it will take you for you to charge is under a second, or about a second? Or I mean to hit a wall, I'd rather. This is not one of those scenarios. So because of that, it's a bad idea to charge. The fact that you charge and got fell over and didn't get sleep by it or didn't die is kind of a miracle. I mean, at this rank, they won't really punish that too much. But even so, like, look, look at this charge, right? So many people... Wait, sorry. Like, the fact that you fire strike, honestly, could have ca caused a lot of problems here. But look at this, right? Why? Why would you charge here, ever? I mean, okay, so I understand the, the idea of going for the charge here to try to get, a, like, a pick or something, or just to pin the Rhine. Most likely they pin the Rhine, but, like, you see it, and you're like, oh, I want to charge him. But much, probably a much safer and better play here was the shields were already low, if you look backwards here. If you see that Reinhardt barrier, it's almost gone, right? So, and Sigma Barrier is also almost gone. So, had we gone for, like, a Shield Break play, probably would have ended up in a much better scenario. But instead, you decided, no, I'm gonna go for a Charge play. Which is still a play, right? But, see, you most, you possibly could have gotten Shattered there. 
because of it, and also the fact that you fell into the ground after you got charged hit, charged by the Rhine could have resulted in you getting slept, or rocked, or and or immediately dying. Because of that, you can't go for those plays. See, pinning him would not be that bad. Yeah, Pan Ham would give you it. There we go. Um, something to point out here is that you love to charge, and if you do love to charge, I get that. But there are so many opportunities where you could charge and you're not. So many great opportunities, in fact. Like when the Reinhardt was over here. Great opportunity to charge. Even if you don't hit him, there's the consequences of you hit not hitting that charge are minimal. And the, the benefit of you hitting it are, are immense. Because if you get charged off him, you would have died. Or you would have died assuming you know what you're doing. But going after this Genji is good. I'll go for a fire strike now. Even if he does eat it, it doesn't matter. There you go. Now, the Hanzo is still alive, right? So why are you going behind your entire team? What? Why? No, please. Stop. Get in front of your entire team. There we go. Now, okay, yep, yep, mm-hmm, yeah. You have so much shield right now. Why would- no, I don't care if you hit the- pin this Rhine. Right? Right. If okay, the fact that the Hanzo is still alive and you're going behind your entire team is your... really dangerous for your whole team because if you keep doing this, then the Hanzo is just going to poke behind the corner and shoot one of them. And this, the fact that you faded to the left and didn't cover your Ana means that your Ana died, and you had so much shield at the time. Your shield was like nearly full. You could have just stayed stayed there and held shield. So. Part of being a main tank is not being a, being afraid to take damage, because that is essentially your role. Take damage for your team. And you're dead. Yep. And you have now lost the fat fight. See, imagine if we had that Nana. I'm just saying, right? A lot of Overwatch um, leads you to believe that oh, there's some fights where you just couldn't have done anything. But in this scenario, there's plenty you could have done here. Going for that charge was really risky as well. Um, because, again, he has quite a fair bit of time to react. And even if you do hit the pin, where you, what wall what wall is there that is going to get you there in a reasonable time frame? Like maybe this pole, but that's really hard to hit. So likely you're going off the edge or you're hitting this wall. If you hit this wall, right? The absolute best case scenario is that if you hit this lamp post, right? Assuming you did hit this lamp post, you're still completely away from your team. Now, let's think about that. If they have a Hanzo who can nearly one-shot people easily, and they have Ana, which is pretty good at range, and they have Lucio, which is also pretty good at range, and a Genji for that matter, what's going to happen when the Reinhardt shield isn't in front of your entire enemy team, in, in, the entire, in front of the team? They're going to take some damage and likely die. So, even if you had hit this pin, it wouldn't have done anything. So, like, understand that if, if, the, if the pin you're going for isn't... Like, okay, let, let's say, for example, you faded back, right? And you pinned him from here. That would have been a lot more okay, because then you're going to hit this wall. And even if you... Let's say you do even miss the pin. It's a fine play, because if you did hit the pin, the benefit of you hitting the pin would be great. And it would have outweighed the, your mistake of not healing, uh, not covering your Ana. So because of that, that would have been really good. But instead, you decided, no, I'm going to charge and try to see if I can hit this lamppost or tree here. And if you die, that's even worse. Actually, I don't know. It's a lost team fight, maybe, at this point already. So maybe it wouldn't have been. But still, like, you understand, it's... You need to, when you charge, you need to make sure that the person, the wall behind that Reinhardt, or the wall behind whatever charge target you're going for, 
needs to be really close. Like here, that would have been great. Here, no, not so much. Well, that's the thing with flank charging. Yeah. Your team grabs here, but it doesn't do anything. And you have now lost point. My is lost. Also, if I sound like I'm being genuinely angry with you, no. Basically, the best way to do a bot review is to show what you did right and be happy with the when the person when the person is doing is doing something right, and be happy when the person is doing something wrong. Not going for that Genji is good. That was a good play. Nice work. Good self restraint. Now, going for a pin here on the cart specifically, not a terrible idea. Also, that wall. Okay, that'll work. See? That's good. That's good gameplay. Okay, swing now. Swing now. Don't keep your shield up unless there's CC that you're worried about. There you go. There you go. Why do you do this, though? Pin him. Yeah, that's fine. I'm going to let this play go out entirely before I say anything more. I have a lot of interesting questions about this play. Swing. Yep. Okay, again, why'd you fire strike? Actually, maybe... Okay, no, no, no. Yep, exactly. That's exactly why. Good shatter. Keep your shield up, keep your shield up. You're gonna get slapped. There it is. There we go. Now don't be don't be uh, sad that that guy got out low. It's fine. No. Okay. Well. There we go. Remember to stay in front of your team. And Connor's gonna be Connor things, and that's not the problem here. Mm hmm. Now. This really begs the question, why are you... Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna put this all the, all the way back here. There's a lot of questions about this play. Even if you did win the team fight, there's a lot of things that uh, were um, interesting. So, first things first, right? Very... Uh, there was some good shield play that I want to highlight. Not going for the Genji is good. It's good self-restraint, even though he got slept. Because it would have resulted in you getting slipped because there was an honor right over there. And also, there's no real good wall to hit him into, so... Now, okay, you're dodging the fire strike, that's good. But, see, my question is... Going for a charge here, yeah, that's fair, I don't care, right? I'm putting up your shield for it, that's good, that's good shield play. But why... Why, during your entire nano, you didn't go after the Lucio or any Squishy once. You decided, no, I'm going to go after this Reinhardt. And to be fair, you almost did kill him. But, like, what if you'd gone after the Lucio to the right, your right or something, you know? Like, during that whole nano, you could have killed that Lucio a lot easier than you could have killed that Reinhardt. Like, okay, I get going after the Reinhardt, but the Lucio's right there. It would have been so easy. It's two swings. Could have killed the Kenji, too. Now he killed your Junkrat. You'd kill the Lucio eventually with your Fire Strike, but like, that Fire Strike could have been on someone else. See? Long charge. Yeah. No. 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 See? Alright, alright, alright. Alright. I get that he's slept, and I get that there's a wall right behind him, so it looks like a really set good setup. But, like, there's so many things that can stop you. There's, like, an honest sleep dart, a Lucio boop, which did stop you, a Sigma rock, well placed. And even if you do pin him, he was already low. He might have died to a shotgun shell or something. You don't need to put on a 300 damage uh, move to him.
It was already low. You, someone else could have gone at him, like Connor or something. But instead, you decided, no, I'm gonna take matters to my own hands. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to charge him, which sometimes is necessary. But in that case, it was definitely not. You most certainly could have just held shield and maybe fire strike or called out that Ryan's sleeping. You know, like why, why? Their shields, their main shield is dead. If he stays slept for a full what, five seconds? Yeah, that's a good shot, right? A little risky, but that's okay. Pin him. Yep. Right? That's good. Now, you kill the Junkrat. But see, now the Junkrat's too far away, so don't go for a ballsy fire strike where you could have died. And it's a pretty safe fire strike, never mind. That was fine. But, yeah, you really gotta make sure that your your shield is in, in front of your team. As a main tank, as playing Reinhardt, you need to protect team. Not just yourself. Okay, so also you're taking a lot of shield damage here, right? But like my question is why are you taking so much shield damage when there's literally no one you're covering but except yourself? Like if you were standing here, I could understand, oh yeah, you're taking a lot of shield damage because you're covering your Ana from getting shot or your brig. Right? And now the brig can be playing more forward because you have a shield in front of you. But instead, you're playing over here. And the only person you can feasibly be covering is Hog. But Hog is peeking, and you can't go for that peek. So why are you here? It's like, maybe you're covering Connor, but Connor is playing Genji. Genji doesn't really need cover unless he's, like, low, but he's not calling for it. So he's not calling for cover and it, because he's not low. If he were low, he could just get healed. It doesn't really matter. Like... Holding over here would be such much, so much of a better play, and I can understand why you take so much shield damage there. But instead, you're uh, shielding more like you're shielding here, right? And you're taking a ton of damage. You're taking your shields, taking so much damage for it, right? You're protecting no one here at all. You want to go for Tango with the tanks, that's fine, but like, you want them further up, and now you got shattered, and now you're dead. Hey, maybe not. No. Yeah, that's it. Oh? Okay, maybe not. Carried by a drunk rat, okay. But I hope you understand what I'm trying to say here. It's... You need to use your shield to protect team. If you're not using it to protect team, or you're not using it to save your own skin, if you're using it to save your own skin, and there's a way out and just cover you can use, why aren't you using... Alright, good shield play. Um, so, now you've lost the fight, and there's nothing you can do. Charge behind you, charge behind you, charge behind you, charge behind you, charge behind you. It's a really good escape method. Do it. Your team's really far away. Why are you holding up so far? No, you're dead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Dead. Wait, okay, you're nanoed. Okay, maybe. No. No, you're still dead. Yep. See? Even though you got everything you could have asked for in that situation, you still died. And why is that? Because you didn't back up with your team, and you relied on just the Ana Nano, and possibly this Junkrat, but currently you have three alive versus six. Even with a Nano Rhine, um, you need three, P three, versus five three versus six is not a good play. Holding this corner here is fine, but like now you could have charged over here. Or, ideally not through here, but like you could have charged onto this wall here, which is very safe. Um, you could have just charged back, like here, and you could have gone behind this wall or something. And that gives you time, your team time to go back. Instead, you decide, no, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to let them push apart. Which is kind of a good mindset, but not really, because think about it. Are you going to achieve anything by holding up here? The answer is most likely no. You're Reinhardt, and therefore... The fact that two people have died at this point means that the fight is essentially lost. Because even with Nano, you can't do enough damage to 1v6. You had that ideal scenario of events to happen for this play, and it still didn't work out because it's a 1v6 or 2v6. Right? Like, you had 20 seconds on the clock, and now you're staggered. Even though you killed both healers, it's not going to matter, because... Yeah. 
tanks are alive. All right, swap the ball here. That's interesting. I don't know if I would have done that, but oh well. Did we kill any with environmental? Not so far. Maybe? No. Oh, you see nine. Nice. Good. Okay, so that was that was fine. All right. Um, I feel like Ryan could have done more there, but you did C9 them, so there is that. But switching to Ryan there wasn't really necessary. I mean, switching to Ball there wasn't really necessary as a contesting play. Um, because you had plenty of time. Because Cart was, like, not, like, really close to the door or anything. If it was, yeah, sure. Go going Ball is fine, because now you're going for a contest. Though it is close to Bridge, so going for maybe Environmentals would have been fine. But I'm just saying. The, the small switch was not, I'm not too torn up about I'm more torn up about the play where you decided, yeah, I'm going to try to 1v6. Like, if you were Genji or Connor, that it's not it's not that Connor is really good. Connor is good, I agree. But it's not that Connor is really good. It's that Connor has the tools to kill the entire enemy team if it's, if he's in, uh, enabled by Ana. You, as Reinhardt, likely do not have the tools to kill the entire enemy team with a Nana Ryan. The entire enemy team, by yourself, with only an Ana to keep you alive, and if you want to swing, you got to put it down your shield, leaving your honor vulnerable. So you kind of understand how this play, the play you went for really wasn't the right one and you needed to regroup. And the fact that they see 90 is purely a stroke of, well, optimal ball gameplay and kind of a stroke of luck because they just didn't realize they were off point. They most certainly could have touched had they realized this, but they didn't. Relying on strokes of luck is never a good play. Nope. See? See? You're putting your shield down and not protecting your team. What? Connor died because he played off too much. That's fine, right? But... Okay, now you're not going with your team. And another has died. And another died. Okay. So... Let me back this up here real fast. I hope I can get through to you why so many of your team died. Because if your team dies while you're playing main tank, it's frequently your fault. Connor... When he died, it was not your fault. Connor pushed up too far. That's fine, right? I'm not saying that's fine as in it's okay that Connor did that. I'm saying that you didn't make any mistake there. Right? But, like... Why did you then fire a strike and then not hold that area knowing that your Ana could have been behind you right over here? Like... The Ana died because you didn't keep the shield up and the Junkrat spammed into her. She also died because she didn't back up enough or go with your shield. But you can't always expect people to do that. You need to keep your shield up to the point where it's almost at like 100 or so health. So that you can optimally use all of your shield to keep your teammates enough like leeway to stay alive. Also, in addition to this mistake, in addition to this, um, you also have, they're going for a play to the left. Okay, also, had you kept your shield up there, I'm actually, I scratched that, scratched that. Had you kept your shield up there, Connor would have actually not died. But that's fine. So, you went for a fire strike and that's fine. Now you fade left, that's fine, right? But why did you not hold your shield here? <laughs> or, moreover, why did you not care about anyone else besides yourself? Because these two people are now dead. Or are essentially dead, because you decided to fade back without them. Like, you were down a few, so going for that play wasn't great. But if you've essentially, even though this play isn't great, it's still a feasible play, right? You have a healer, you have a tank, and you have a tank. That's enough, right? But instead, you decide, nah, I'm going to throw their lives away. And it turns out, both of them die. 
Zarya might not have. She made a fade, fade back in time. Nope. Never mind. She's really low. And she's dead. So you see how if your main tank isn't in the right spot, you start to... Your team starts dying. Yeah, that's usually how it works. You need to be taking damage with your shield, but not so much, or not taking it when it's not valuable at all. Which is hard, I understand. But it's something you need to start to do. Okay, so Connor died. Why did he die? Think about that for a second. Why did Connor die then? Maybe he was being dumb and pushing up too far, but I don't know if that was it. See, you notice how Connor knows that there's a shield here and then immediately dies? That's because Junkrat's mind's balanced, but also, yeah, see, <laughs> see, why, what do you think happened with this Ana here? You're deciding, no, I'm not going to shield her, she's just going to die. We're not going to, we're not going to shield that Ana at about to save here, or we're not going to communicate to her that she should back up and put a shield in front of her so she can. We're just going to leave her to die. So now you're down two, and your only recourse is to back up, but I'm assuming that's not what you did. But regardless, maybe you did. Nope, never mind. And you might just be dead here. 45 health. Live because the Junkrat missed. See, this is good shield play. Your shield is low because you've been using it so much for only yourself. See, the Zarya is that. Yep, mm hmm. Mm hmm. You see how the Zarya took so much damage? Because he didn't decide to cover her getting in? Look how low she got. You're not shielding here. You could totally be shielding for just a second and covering her, but instead you said, nah. I'm gonna hold right. What? What are you... Where are you? Why are you here? Just because you have Shatter doesn't make you invincible. You're gonna try to shatter them, aren't you? Yep. I see it right now. I know what you're lining up for. <laughs> I swear, if you try to go for a shatter. Okay. Camping that amp, that's fine, honestly. Okay, no. No, don't charge him. Sigma stopped you before you could. Thank that Sigma, by the way. He saved your life. Okay. Okay. No. There you go. Back up. You need to cover your team and not just yourself on the left. Junkrat's missing, and that's why he's not killing people. But imagine if he wasn't. There it is. <gasps> and Bat might die. The Chaan is dead. What are you doing? Yeah, there's so many people right here. And you're just like, nah, they're fine. I'm just gonna sit over here. What are you doing? <laughs> Please enlighten me. If you have an actual reason on why you didn't go there, I ha I would love to know. Because I can't find why you wouldn't cover your team. Because if you, even if you do live and get a six man shatter, it doesn't matter because shatter is bad. Or shatter is not very good. In terms of killing the entire enemy team. Even with a nano, it doesn't really work. So you have a shield here. You don't have a ton, but you have enough to keep Connor alive and possibly this Ana. But nah, I'm not gonna, yeah. Your shield's life isn't, okay. Your shield's life isn't more important than your healers or and or Connor. But apparently it's more important than your own. <laughs> See the junk rat? Okay, okay. Now you're going for a flank shatter, which is fine, but they completely saw you. So, what are you going to do here? I would charge out of danger, but instead... What's your option that you choose? Back up slowly with shield up. See? You nano to Winston. You shatter one or oh, two. You shattered two. Nearly died to a Reinhardt charge. Daph is now dead, or essentially dead. Connor died again. Junk's still on half right high ground. Sigma so died. Oh, it's not. It's not the. Okay, it's not the enemy junk. Warriors right here. You start swinging. What? Where do you think they are? <laughs> okay. Oh. 
Reinhardt's back. No. Okay, honestly, that wasn't fun. That was fine. That was that that met the criteria of a charge that wouldn't really that is pretty much a good idea. You missed the charge, which is really more of a technical thing rather than a gameplay sense. And I'm trying to get across your thick skull of gameplay, and that was fine, right? Because there was a wall really close, and they were very very. They were not alone, but had you pinned that mercy, the Rhine would have been alone. It's an easy win. He shatters here, which is honestly fine. Why? Okay, no. Just sitting on cart here is kind of weird. Why is it yours? And your bat died to a mirror. Wow. Wonder how that happened. Hmm. I wonder where your bat is. Oh, is he on cart where you could have been shielding? Oh, that's real a shame, ain't it? Or is he to your right? Oh, wait, never mind. You couldn't have been shielding that. My apologies. That's his mistake entirely. Though it does beg the question, why didn't you go with them? But... Also, why aren't you pinning him? Or trying to, at least. You keep going for these, like, crazy pins. Why didn't you try to pin him? Okay, well... Like, this is, like, such an optimal pin. He's completely cut off from his entire en the entire team. You didn't see a single person behind him. You can keep going for these crazy pins and, like, look... You had so much time, so much time to go for a pin here. But instead, nah, I'm not gonna go for a pin. That's silly. Why would I ever go for a pin? Huh. Like, even if you had missed, the worst thing would have happened that you would have died. But you've already, you've already died, and honestly, had you, considering the people who had died top right, the, the odds of you swinging the team fight had a tank been dead might have been much better than had you done what you just did. Shattering here is interesting. Yep, there you go. Swing. Swing again. No, 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 no. Swing, swing again, don't fire strike. You didn't need to. Oh well, that's fine. Good, you didn't use his fire strike this time. Now, is your bap gonna do the funny thing? Nope. Why? Okay, that's fine. He might die for it, but it's... Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay, that's what we call some over usage on altage to correct really bad or really interesting mistakes. Had they been much better, that mortality field would have been dead and these three people are dead now. Or these people are th dead now. But regardless, you decided, oh, I'm not going to be with my team. Oh no, I don't worry about that. You got nanoed and you still won. But understand that you made this fight a lot more tense than it needed to be. You... Had you not gone for that pin, you could have won that uh, what, that fight with literally like one alt, maybe zero. But instead, because of that pin, they needed to expend three, which is not always going to be readily available. So that is my VOD review. I hope you took it me seriously. If you didn't, I'm never doing this one again. If you did, well, I might, I might do one more in the future. Well, never say... Well, you know the rest of the sentence, but regardless, I'm prob. Hopefully, you took that seriously and you actually learned something from it. And have a good day. Oh, yeah, and uh, don't forget to follow my Twitch at twitch.tv forward slash L U C H U C H U 7. Thank you. Have a good day.